Hey everybody, this is Nelson Everhart, sheepishly returning with my tail between my legs. Sorry for such a long break. I was working on Novus, what do you want me to say? I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Kings Isle is located down in Austin, Texas. I used to live down in Austin, Texas, which is where I met and worked with the talented gentleman named Jules Watcham, who wound up getting me the hookup to get me the job writing for Wizard 101. Now, Cincinnati is a great place. It's not exactly known as a development hub of video games, so... The way that I do work with uh, video game developers is usually pretty much entirely online. Communicate via email and talk about what the project's all about. And negotiate terms, and then they'll send a contract for me to sign, and I'll sign it digitally and send it back. And then they'll send me Word docs that describe how the... Consequently, I'm mostly hearing the specifics of a world that I'm going to write for only in text. I was calling this world Aquila for the longest time because that just felt the most natural pronunciation of it for me. But I studied Spanish. Apparently it's Aquila, as in Aquilin, which describes the hook shape of an eagle's nose. Fun fact. Well, I, I don't know how fun it is, but it's a fact. Now we all know that this is Aquila, and I'm going to try and remember to keep pronouncing it that way. Aquila was described to me as being sort of a tribute to the golden era of Hollywood historical films from probably the 50s and a little bit of the 60s. Films like Ben-Hur, Spartacus, Cleopatra, uh, The Robe. Films didn't even really have sound before about 1927. I think the, the jazz singer came out. So this era is the time when film scoring really stepped into the modern era. It's using, you know, full orchestra and getting like a huge epic sound to make everything seem elevated and gigantic and epic. And that's what I was asked to simulate. I don't think I got super close to it, but I did my version of it. And I think it wound up sounding pretty good. Um, this track is the Aquila Epic Combat. I remixed it a little bit. This track was from 2013. So let's do a playthrough of this and then I will come back and talk about it. <laughs> And that's the loop. So there's a couple section here that's really the climbing of the mountain. There's an area in Aquila called Mount Olympus. Hey, writers, that one was a little too on the head. And speaking of too much on the head, I was inspired to kind of literally describe climbing up the mount uh, to glory, I guess, is what I'm looking for. The specific guidance on this tune was should have a very large feel, should have the threat of defeat, but the hope of triumph, should feel against the odds, but sheer determination will see you through this larger than life battle. So, you know, like all of the other battle tunes in Wizard 101. <laughs>
I mean, if you're talking about climbing up a mountain, look, it's stair steps. So sometimes I will use a literal translation. Okay, well, I'm climbing somewhere. All right, well, the melody should kind of mostly go up. I find that playing the trumpet down in its range. It's sort of in its blattissimo range down there to try and play something big, low on a trumpet is hard. But I like the way it combines with the French horn down in that range. And then it's easy just to take the trumpet, playing the same thing as the horns, but up an octave. Then it gets it into its epic register. The end of that melody is something called contrary motion, where you have two instruments that are in the lead, but they're going sort of different directions you don't really you don't really expect the trumpet to go down to that section but i wanted to throw a little i keep calling it the eyebrow it sounds like that's all i do my eyebrows are just constantly going up and down some sort of deranged ventriloquist dummy and i didn't want that chord to be what was expected <laughs> You might think combat music is just constantly full on aggro. I still believe that you need something to compare and contrast. It's dynamics. It has to build up and then tear down and build up and tear down. This is a string staccato patch. But if you hold down the sustain pedal, you just have this little ostinato pattern that's kind of cranking away down here. I put a little horn melody through there. And everything's about that ostinato pattern still going on, but you'll notice that I'm kind of doubling it in different instruments. And then it kind of explodes out the top. It's tempting when you're writing stuff on the keyboard and you don't have to actually physically be bowing or blowing on an instrument and using your air. It's tempting to ignore what the players are actually going through. So here the strings are really sawing away on these gigantic chords. And you'll notice I left a big hole there and that's because you gotta give them some place to rest. Even if you don't give them some place to rest, they're gonna look for a place where they can like save some energy to make it through the whole, whole piece. If you're trying to make something sound like somebody actually played it, then paying attention to all that mechanics of that instrument is important. <laughs> Notice that all the instruments, everything that's playing kind of takes that little break in there. Break. Breathe. We're kind of in a minor mode here. We're sort of an F. So it's going to F and then B natural, which is the flat five key. That's not found in the key of A minor. So that's the normal five. Already giving you like a bit of an unsettled idea. And then I'm using the F sharp there, which is the flat two. Again, not found in the key. That note for a little bit of tension in there. I probably got this originally from the Star Wars films. Just a really crunchy chord that's not meant to sound good. It's not really meant to be a nice sonorous interval. It's supposed to introduce even more tension. Here's the second build. Actually, in retrospect, I think what I was doing here was trying to simulate a, a car engine revving up or a car going ever faster here. So I have the do 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 which is kind of the tension, you know, going behind everything. But then those low strings. <laughs> So 
So those notes are just semitones. They're just climbing up through the semitones, right? Uh, e flat to E to F to F sharp. Uh, and then I also accentuated that with the choir doing, uh, it starts off on the same note, but then it actually goes to uh, the F sharp and the G, which, which in, in the strings is playing against the F and the F sharp. So there's more, just building more tension like this, hopefully. <laughs> The truth is I'm just trying to get that ascending tension, just a note that's going to And on that note, <laughs> uh, I have a choir effect sound. I don't even remember what this is from. Uh, there it is. It's from a really old library I have that I've actually translated into contact here called Women's Choir Cluster Crescendos from Voices of the Apocalypse, I think. And here's that one note. It's just a cluster as they slowly bend upwards. Wait for it. So I had to play it at the exact right time. I probably played it in and then moved it so that that crescendo finally happens over here. But So that's that build there. I have to be careful when I do that just because we loop around something that's really signature like that. It's obvious when it's happening. And if you have a loop where you're trying to distract people that there's a loop going on, you obviously don't want to put too many markers that say, hey, this is where you are in the tune because then you notice how often it's, it's looping around. This is some more tension notes here. So we're in A flat now. And the chord that I play on that second bar there is in E, G, C. So that's actually a C major chord. It's basically as far away as you can get from an A flat minor. Through Aquila, I used the chimes in kind of historical epic films of that Hollywood era. It just sounds big and noble and, you know, like an instrument of the gods. And also obviously a lot of timpani. Uh, toms here are kind of propelling everything forward. I didn't use a ton of percussion because even these biblical epic films of that era still had a budget and they were trying to save money wherever they could. I was trying to go a little bit safe with that. They probably wouldn't have used toms like that back in the day. But timpani and chimes and the bass drum. Definitely on the menu. And then gongs were always sort of the exotic, the exotic symbol, I guess. So there you go. That was Aquila, and I pronounced it right every single time, I think. Uh, this knocks another world off of the musical tour of the spiral. I think that leaves us with, well, now that uh, Novus is coming out, that'll be added to the list. But I think that leaves Wizard City and Mirage, I want to say, or at least one more. Uh, I am looking forward to, to crossing these all off, but maybe we'll do something special when we finally finish, finish everything. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll talk to you later. Adieu.